project. Earlier this week, you would have heard Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarry mention, announce that the vessel carrying the heavy equipment will arrive on Dominica. It has arrived, and we are here to witness the occasion. It's a significant moment in the life of the international project. So we're here with Mr. Carl Murad, he is the Operations Director at MFC, Project Manager of CR5, Mr. Joseph, Mr. Samuel Johnson, who is the CEO of the Airport Development Company, and Mr. Benoit Badwell, who is the Chairman of the Airport Development Committee. I now hand over to the members of the press to interact with this gentleman. We'll begin with uh, Mr. Carl Moderat, who is the head of the airport um, MMC development of this airport project. Mr. Moderat, where are we now with this project? Um, well, we are at a good stage because we, have, we are finalizing the detailed drawings of the, uh, of the project, so we've been working on the design. Excuse me, sir, can you speak up because we need to ask questions and we need to hear what you're saying so we can fast follow up questions. We hardly hear you. Please, okay. thank right. you. Okay, we'll, we'll start again. Yeah. We have been working on the engineering part of the drawings, engineering design, schematic design, and detailed design for all disciplines with our designers in, uh, in the States. Uh, in conjunction, in conjunction with the uh, rest of the team in different parts of the world. And, uh, at the same time, we've been working on uh, inside with regards to uh, the soil, the soil tests, uh, and that's a very uh, sophisticated uh, procedures. Uh, we got all the uh, equipments required to do the soil testing and studying of the uh, site uh, levels, etc. And uh, we have established, uh, as you maybe all know, a special laboratory for all these uh, tests and results. Uh, just to make it simple, for every boreholes, we have about 26 different tests of soil that are done before we uh, make a decision of how to handle that part of the uh, land. Uh, in addition, we are doing excavation to the affected area or to the required area, leveling, preparation for the mobilization and the offices and the facilities that are required for the contractor to function. And, that's what we have been doing for uh, the past uh, year and a half, let's say. For now, for today, this is a good day that will expedite our uh, work, will expedite the construction, it will expedite the excavation and the backfilling and all this. So we have today about 132 pieces of equipment in addition to 44 uh, containers full of uh, building materials, in addition to 11, ton, 11 tons of uh, steel rebars, that's what you see up there. And uh, we were looking forward to uh, this day, uh, in fact, because it will expedite our action. Just to give you an example, we have about 49 dump trucks, six loaders, six bulldozers, five graders, two forklifts. Uh, we have roller compactors, 12 of them. We have the dynamic compaction. Uh, we have the excavators, about 16 uh, excavators. We have the crush, we have the concrete patch plant. Two, we have the grain trucks, we have the mobile grains, etc. 
and we're talking about from big size to medium to small size. And all this will, uh, will be facilitated and used in the project. Uh, and there will be more to come. This is just the first batch of uh, requirements that we have, but we will have continuous containers, continuous materials, continuous equipments as we go along in the project. You spoke, sir, about the soil testing, um, which is the environmental impact study. How far are you as it relates to that? And as you go along, you, see, you also spoke about you'll be doing it in various stages. At what point in time will it be final? Um, I'll take it on that. Um, so you talk of two different things. Yes. Okay. So there is, there is the, uh, the environmental impact assessment that has already been done. Mm -hmm. um, the project site is over 500 acres. Um, fortunately, it's not virgin. Um, so the virgin site, in other words, has been a site that there have been plantation and production in the past. And that study <coughs> was done um, last year and found that there is no endemic or endangered species of plants or animals. Um, they, it, they did the study, also they did some interaction with um, the community as well to collect that feedback. So that part has been done. The, uh, the geotech study, which um, Carl alluded to, um, has been ongoing and it is according to the regulations that requires almost 300 over 300 bowls done at well 600 in total but done in a spacing of of um, 60 meters over the entire um, runway side where you need to ensure that the quality of the soil material for cutting and for filling is suitable, right? And if it's not suitable, what um, what adjustments or what treatments can be done with it? As we all know, that part of the island is a lot of clay, um, and that brings its own challenges. But um, we've been working with the lab to determine exact uh, elasticity, moisture content, and all that, and then what sort of treatments will be done to ensure that there's slope stabilization. So that is still ongoing. We're about halfway of the geotech study. Um, and it's, it's not a, a, some people say, well, do you do the geotech study before you choose the site? No. Um, I'm sure we've all seen airports being built in the water. Um, Hong Kong actually built an airport um, out, out in out, out that sea. In Japan, they built an airport out that sea. So it's, it's not about a go, no go, but if it's, um, it's, about, it's about knowing what the soil types are and what, um, what engineering adjustments need to be made to uh, to I don't know, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, more or less, because I was also asking how long do you foresee that aspect is going to be for? Yeah, so I think we're, we're about halfway through it. Um, the geotech. Um, yes. And, and what, what, how we prioritized um, the assessment is, as you can imagine, the runway is, a, is, a, is the critical area, which is where the planes will be landing. The apron and taxiway area, also very, very critical. Um, so for the most part, we've done a preliminary assessment over the entire length of the runway. But according to regulations, they have to be a little bit more exhaustive. And we hope that probably in the next uh, six months uh, to have the entire site um, um, complete for the future. But we have enough, we have enough um, preliminary information to work with to influence and inform the design and that's going on right now. So it's, it's, it's not a sequential process, it's a parallel process where you use the information you get to make tweaks as you go along. Yep. I was about to ask, uh, does it have a bridge of voice, bridge of voice so we can hear. So I'll repeat it. So yes. his question was, does it have to be complete first before you commence any? And the answer, as I just alluded to earlier, is that you can do it in parallel. So you don't have to have everything finished before you can do the next. You can use the information that you get and, and, and work with it and design into it. Because there, as you can appreciate, over 500 acres, you have the terminal area, the apron area, the facilities, and then the actual runway. You can use that information and work in parallel. Because I, I'm sure everybody will appreciate we are working with a very aggressive timeline um, to try to get this done. So 
um, we're trying to do it in parallel. Right. And we'll build information that you get and, 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 and student sprints. So Carl, now that the equipment is here, where do we go from here on the airport project? I think, as I said, that will expedite the uh, process and the construction. start seeing a big change to the, uh, to the process, the schedule, the works, because of uh, this shipment here. We're not talking only about equipment, as I stated, we have 44 containers full of building materials and we have 1100 uh, tons of uh, steel. And that's only the first batch out of maybe uh, 15. Uh, so we'll get in there. Yes. Right. What about local con or local employees on the project? <coughs> uh, well, uh, as MMC, we already have uh, uh, many engineer uh, engineers on. Uh, I mean, the Monican engineers inside, uh, as we speak. Uh, in total, maybe we have about uh, 28 to date, and that's not at the airport side. That's at uh, uh, housing, different different housing projects. And uh, as for the airport, we definitely. Uh, are planning to uh, to hire locals in all professions, starting from laborers, skillful technicians, engineers, inspectors. Uh, you know, but uh, we may require to request for certain certificates or certain training prior to that. But it's. Uh, It's one of our goals is uh, to uh, focus on the local uh, market, focus on the local uh, human resources, uh, develop these human resources uh, prior and during on-job training, etc. The way MMC is, 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 is thinking about this whole thing is, is not only to do the airport project, uh, but also to uh, methodology of doing it, how to do it. And uh, part of that uh, is, is, is to do with uh, how can we enrich the local communities, uh, uh, human resources, uh, Part, you know, so I look forward to uh, receiving uh, CVs from all the Dominican uh, interested candidates uh, and in fact CR5 have already published a website and uh, an email for those that are interested to submit uh, but we're getting there. And we encourage all Dominican engineers, architects, uh, technicians, uh, plumbers, electricians, uh, trainee students, laborers to submit and let us know who they are, where they are, what's their contact uh, numbers, etc., so we can reach them out. We also have Mr. Joseph from yes. China Railway and he will share the with us. Um, yes. Can you highlight his designation, please? His so role? He's the acting project, project manager, manager project. for CR5. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Joseph, what is going on here with the arrival of this equipment? Uh, actually, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Kyle Mishanch, uh, this vessel is our first batch to bring the uh, construction equipment uh, purely for the airport's uh, construction. And, uh, and, uh, and still, as uh, Mr. Kyle mentioned, uh, we have the uh, we have construction equipment. We also have the building 
materials. We also have the, have the other spare part or accessories. And uh, this is the only uh, first batch. Uh, but uh, I believe this, uh, this vessel, uh, the, uh, the arrival of this vessel, will price the button to give us an acceleration for the progress of the airport construction. How uh, qualified is CR5 to undertake this project? Actually, CR5 is a, a global company uh, which is undertaking, undertaking a project across the uh, Asia, Africa, Caribbean area. Uh, CR5 undertakes the uh, airport, highways, railways, even the buildings, the plazas, and all the, all the harbors. So it's a very uh, fully organized company and uh, it's uh, qualified for the construction of the airport. Yeah. Mr. Johnson, any, any other questions? Mr. Johnson. No, 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 I, 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 I see you asked um, about the CR5 and one of the things that I think we'll see with the CR5 and the other question is um, not only do they bring the technical um, skill and know-how, but I think there's a great opportunity for, for knowledge transfer. I think that's one of the things that um, the agreement with MMC in, includes is, uh, and Carl spoke about it at length, is ensuring that as many locals as possible um, are involved in the development of the project. And CR5, as, as Joseph indicated, has a vast amount of experience um, building airports, railways, uh, major infrastructure works on them. Um, and they've, they've, they've come and have done extensive consultations already. Um, the design team has already been on island um, to get a good feel of the, uh, the, the area, the topography, um, and ensuring that there's a very deep understanding of, of the unique situation here. So I have full confidence that Sierra Club should be able to do that. I would like to add here, take this opportunity and uh, give the total credit to our Prime Minister for uh, enforcing and reinforcing the policy of firing Dominican contractors. Uh, MMC has about 12 projects, 12 housing projects under construction now, and all been done with local contractors. MMC is dealing now with close to 65 local contractors, in which 16, and actually 20 of them, are now at working at Grand Bay. Ten of them are working at uh, Scottsdale. Seven of them are working at Point Michel housing project. Nine of them are working at Eggleston, which is yet to start. Seven of them are working up there. You can see it at Canefield housing project. Um, ten of them are working at Vegas housing project. Eight are working at Paybush housing project and four are working at Penville housing project, nine are working at Woodford uh, housing project and all these are local contractors and their subcontractors are local subcontractors and their suppliers and electricians and plumbers are locals so you can do the math. Now when it comes into the airport, we will take every opportunity to localize and uh, use the local resources as directed, as inspired by the Prime Minister and as instructed also by our owner, the CEO, Dr. Anthony Heath. It's very important to know that. It's very important now to know that all my engineers that are supervising those sites 
are Dominicans, engineers, and they are qualified. Not only that, I'm really proud of them. I'm proud of their service. I'm proud of their potential to learn. They are fast learners. My personal secretary could have been from anywhere in the world. She's Dominican. And I was amazed of how fast she learned and she she's up to the task. She's really good. And the same thing for our logistic manager. She's Dominican. Uh, my senior, one of my senior engineers, she is also Dominican, in addition to the others. So that's what I want to we're in two parts today, CEO of the Port Authority and the Chairman of the Airport Development. Okay, well let me say, um, today we're elated um, to have all of this equipment for the airport here at the port today. Uh, I think it's um, been long in coming. Uh, Dominica has been talking about the International Airport for a number of decades come to the point where we, all, we are in fact moving, going to move ground uh, in the next few days once the equipment are landing. Uh, today we have a slight delay because we have sea swells and we have a little delay in terms of uh, moving the equipment but we are going to move the equipment and this is a very important day in the life of the construction of the airport. Uh, it's here for all to see that the equipment is here and this equipment is going to be stored temporarily at the public works area as well as on the port and we are going to have them move to Wesley within a short space of time. I dare say for Dominica in terms of the economic activity, this is going to spur economic activity for Dominica because in the construction sector it is actually going to bolster the issue of employment. As you've heard uh, a little while ago, several engineers, several local persons have been employed. Now you're going to have a lot more persons being employed, truckers, you're going to have a lot of, lot of um, activity within the airport construction site. And, and I dare say that that is going to help us from the economic uh, standpoint. And we are going to, the airport brings not only during construction, but even after completion, the airport will continue to provide jobs of various classes to the Dominican population. And I would want to, to, to ensure that we all, and I know speaking for thousands of Dominicans all over, that they are indeed very happy today that the equipment is here and earth moving is soon going to start. Well, we estimate, uh, based on um, our assessment, something like two and a half days, but we will try our best to see how we can do that. Our only condition here is based on wave action. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of movement with the ship, and because some of the equi equipment is very heavy equipment, we have to be extremely careful. So safety is first for all of, all of the work that we do here, and we will be minded by that. But as soon as we can get the right conditions to move the cargo to uh, shore, we will do that in earnest. And Mr. Barrio, can you speak to us about the badge that was created in the Amur for the Wesley area? Well, like everything else, we create what we call contingencies, uh, given all of the situations that we go through. Uh, there's a lot of planning taking place, and what we want is to ensure, from a logistical standpoint, that we, left no we leave no stone unturned. And so we are looking at all options, and that is an option that's available to us. And if at all we have to use it, we will utilize it. Okay. In terms of transporting the equipment from um, the current public work site to the um, site in Wesley, um, I foresee that with such heavy equipment, it might cause some delay in traffic. So is the public now given the assurance that in terms of the times that it's, it will not be, it will not cause any inconvenience? I can, I can assure you that there is planning, and again I come back to logistics, there is planning behind all of what is happening. Uh, I know that the police, the public works department, um, the various engineers within the Ministry of Public Works have been doing all the assessments of the weight um, of the various pieces of equipment and that's why public works is being used as a staging area because they can assemble or disassemble depending on, on where they're going to move 
uh, parts of various equipment so that they can handle the, terrain, the, the roadways that they're going to move over. So rest assured, that's going to happen. And the times in which they're going to be moving, most of us sometimes will be the same. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. And can we get a little bit of information about the equipment that's actually there and what they will be involved in doing? It's really a sophisticated, uh, long uh, list, but as I said, just uh, I will repeat in, in general. Okay, we have uh, two mobile cranes at 25 tons and 50 tons capacity. We have crane trucks, two at 8 tons capacity. We have concrete patching plants. 75 cubic meter per an hour, two of them. We have uh, uh, crusher 200 tons per an hour. We have the excavators, 16 excavators, 360 uh, and smaller. Uh, we have the dynamic compaction, two of them. We have the roller compactions, 12 of them, ranges between three, uh, 33 tons to 20 tons. Uh, uh, compaction energy. We have the uh, uh, forklifts, traders, bulldozers, loaders, dump trucks, in addition to the building materials, 41 containers, in addition to 1100 tons of steel. That's the summary, but the list goes on and on. And that's only the first batch. So much, Mr. Murad, and other officials associated with the airport project, members of the media. We thank you so much for turning out. As you heard from Mr. Murad, there are jobs available on the airport project, and we want to stress that the China Railway advert is out, and there are openings for operators, truck drivers, surveyors, lab technicians, site engineers, and the list goes on. So we are really encouraging the government and public to take advantage of these opportunities. Over the next four days or so, we will see the offloading of the equipment, which will be transferred to the public work site near here and then onto the western site. So you can look out for that. We'll try as much as possible to take you along with us as we go through the process. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. So once again, we are saying thanks for joining.